Hello. 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 Welcome to the, the H and U podcast with your hosts Himalay and, and Urvashi. Yes, yes. Um, if you haven't already, please comment or share this with people if mm-hmm. you want. Um, yeah. Make sure to subscribe if you like what you hear. Well, we ain't putting on YouTube, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, make sure to subscribe Fun if you're listening now, to anyway. Club, uh, into parts. Yeah, if you're, if you're listening on... To the clips. If you're listening on yeah, iTunes. Is iTunes a thing, now? Actually, I was looking for iTunes the other day, yeah? Yeah. I can't find it. Really? Yeah. I've only got App Store, unless I've deleted it. Oh, yeah, because we have... Um, for music now. yeah i don't know if itunes is still thing i'm sure it is yeah it it still, it still is, is. Okay, yeah because i've heard people be like oh download my song on itunes i must have deleted it then mm. so how have you been i've been good thanks i've just been a bit busy what about you with what, with what? work work yes with work <laughs> explain Okay, um, so I do a school run currently where I help the transportation of kids with mental health illnesses or disabilities to and from school and home. Um, And I basically just work around that schedule for now. um, And I try and fit in everything I want to do as well in between that time. So you said busy, yeah? Yes. With the work, right? Yes. To me, looking out, looking in, Yes. From the outside. Mm. You're not busy, okay? I am busy. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because there's a lot of things hold that revolve around it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? To me, busy is you're constantly doing something, yeah? Yes, and I okay. am. Hold on. <laughs> you get out of the house at seven o'clock, or roughly, you'll get back half nine? Nine forty. Half nine, then. Nine forty. And. You will sleep. <laughs> no, not every day. Today I went out. The other day I went out. I went out and did what? I met up with a friend, went out, okay. went shopping, did ran errands. So, so you're chilling, really? Let's be honest. No. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm so busy. I have to go meet up with friends and do errands. Errands I understand, but. Yeah, we're running errands together. We're being smart. Okay. <laughs> okay, mate. Um, what have I been doing? I've been working. I've been busy. That that's I've such been bullshit. Been busy. I've been busy. Okay, then you're busy, right? right okay. Right, right. I work a I work a, a normal job. At her, yeah, yeah, seventy three. But you're at home and you get to play games and watch YouTube hold on, videos. Hold on, I'm working from home. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now that we've caught up on what our life is like right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, my question to you. Mm. Since you've just recently started working out, mm. what do you think about when you're working out? Well, I listen to music. And while doing so, I let my imagination take over. And so, I am think about literally anything and everything that's going through my mind. So Very generic. Mind? but um. I don't know. I start imagining scenarios, like imagining the future. I like to think about my main goal and like why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm. But recently I've been able to deal with the pain that comes with working out. What pain? You know how like they say pain is gain. Like when you work out and then you have this like your muscles are aching. Mm. Before I never got past the stage because I'd be like, oh, no, my arms hurt. And then I'd stop working out for like months. Okay. What happens when when you're working out? You're you're in your set, let's say you're fourth, fifth one in, and you're starting to struggle. And you need to get to 10, let's say you do push ups or something. Mm. What are you saying to yourself? Well, I I now took your advice from what you advised me last time I tried to work out, which was you need to focus on your breathing because you need to breathe. Because I know that when I'm working out, I don't breathe properly. Like I don't breathe like you're supposed to breathe. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like I hold my breath while I'm trying to work out. I you know that's not just you. A lot of people when they first work out, that's mm. just, I mean, that's what to me. Was focusing on breathing. Mm. So I take a second to like stop 
and like catch myself, like catch my breath, take have a sip of water, like have a little break before I carry on. Mm-hmm. And that helps because it also motivates me. And then also I get a little break. Mm-hmm. You know, another thing that's really helpful mm-hmm. is breathing more than you need to, as in like breathing. Like over breathing. Yeah, not over breathing because there's another thing as over breathing, <laughs> I don't think. Um, but breathing deeper. Mm, that's that a good sense. question you know is over breathing a thing comment below if you think over breathing's a thing if there's a comment section i don't know how i don't know how <laughs> Amo- i keep saying amazon, amazon. i don't know how apple um itunes spotify spotify as well I don't yeah know how it works. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but yeah re- breathing deeper mm. will help a lot even okay. if, if you feel like you, you're doing a little bit because then your muscles recover a lot more faster. Well, you recover a lot more faster. <clears throat> Thank you for that tip. I shall keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. I'm actually working out after this. I don't know whether it's it would be better if I actually made a schedule of like a certain time a day that I work out. Because right now I'm very easy on myself, but hard on like the fact that I have to do a workout every day. Mm-hmm. But I'm very lenient with like when I actually work out. Like, is it going to be after I eat, before I eat, in the night? Like, for me, the time doesn't matter. But do you think I should? construct like a timetable of like oh this time is the time i'm gonna work out I or does it make a difference i think it's preference because everyone i mean it doesn't matter when you work out mm. there's because everyone has preferences again like me i've done working out in the mornings i've done working out after work mm. i've been doing night ones before and for me personally waking up in the morning and working out has always been better mm. because you start your day off with something hard. Makes everything else feel easy. The rest of the day feels so much easier. Mm-hmm. To be honest, now that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, well, hopefully when I get it right, but waking up five o'clock in the morning and going working out is going to be my next thing to do. Because mm. I've realised when I'm trying to work out after work, I mean, I'm sitting down on my chair and I'm doing absolutely nothing but scrolling through or being in the trap of scrolling through tiktok uh social media sit there and you know i finish at three o'clock mm-hmm. and i've got so much time on my hands but before you know it, it's half five and i've been scrolling for the last two hours yeah that time and only a bag but it's yeah true. working out in the morning is so much better mm. and i say I, I do work out but it's not like a full workout i'll do like press-ups here in the morning and then do my stretches which does help Mm. But I'd rather really put in the work in the morning. Yeah, do it all. Come upstairs, shower, get ready. I mean, yeah. my workouts aren't even that long nowadays because I'm doing heat training. It's like 20 minutes mm. of 110%. You know, go upstairs, relax, do all my other stuff. What is your morning routine? Do you have a morning routine? And do you, would if not, would you like one? I do have a morning routine. But it's been the same for like a good, since pre-COVID, it's been the same. Uh, It's always get up, brush my hair, get my hair out of my face. So then I'm ready for the bathroom stuff, which is like, you know, obviously go to the loo, brush your teeth, get your retainers sorted, do your skincare. Skincare is very important. And then especially because I have acne, I need to sort that out. So it's a big part of my day. And then I also have a nighttime routine, which is basically it mirrors my morning routine. It's basically the exact same thing, but just flipped but yeah so here yeah, that is my morning routine and then after that i'm really bad in the sense that i don't have breakfast i don't eat i don't ha- have the most important meal of the day um and so that is something i'm working on waking up a bit earlier yeah. to be able to actually have something whether it's like tea or just anything get something in my system um but today that kind of backfired on me because i woke up a bit earlier and I was able to make myself tea. Thank you for boiling the kettle. Um, but I knocked it in the car. And by the time we dropped the second kid off, I was bursting for a pee. And I was like, I really, really need to go to the loo. And I was like, oh, I can stop. I can stop at the field. I was like, please don't. I don't <laughs> want to squat. Field. I ain't trying to squat in the field while peeing. Because personally, I just could not. I, I couldn't. So... Yeah, I was like, you know, just carry on, just go home. Okay, that even a drive, I can, I can hold it. Literally, as soon as we were parked in the drive, I ran in the house. Mm. But um, yeah, that's so that kind of backfired. So maybe not liquid foods, maybe just solid foods. Mm-hmm. 
but yeah that's um that's my next thing to work on is try and eat in the morning before we leave mm. yeah have if, you got a morning time routine? sorry go on i guess you can have a more like a eating mm. <clears throat> i don't know uh, my my um thoughts on that has changed a little bit because over the last probably like six years six years six months mm. um i've been trying to do the intermittent fasting thing so i don't eat until after 11 because i feel like i have less time to eat which means i don't overeat ah okay you work around your break time schedule then what do you mean like because you said you have less time to eat in that break time what break time 11 o'clock no from 11 onwards oh i thought you meant for your break no, time no, okay no. okay for 11 o'clock onwards i can eat from well to be honest it's from 11 till 7 Mm. is my time to eat I, I doesn't matter what time i eat as long as it's between those hours mm. i'm okay that's pretty good for you though yeah Can't and it does really. feel i feel so much better for it i used to feel bloated a lot mm. and that stopped but that i think that's more to do with like drinking lemon ginger tea every morning mm. yeah that feels good so i'm guessing that's part of your morning routine like do you do you have a morning routine um so i'll wake up at five o'clock mm. Uh, first thing I do, stretch. Then I'll do some push ups, mm -hmm. do a bit of sit up, just a little workout there. Um, I wash my face, I cream on my face, because that's important to me. And then I write in my journal, just how I, what I'm thinking, what mm. I'm feeling. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that's something that I've religiously been doing for the last six months as well. That feels good. Just like getting anything that goes on in your mind. That's crazy, like your morning thoughts. Yeah, morning thoughts. Mm. And it doesn't have to make sense. Like some sentences don't make sense. Mm. I mean, I could be going on oh, one sentence, I could be saying something, and the next is completely like, just you got nothing to do with that. Mm. Yeah. That's mad. That's good. But it gives me so much time in the morning. I don't feel rushed. Mm. That's the best feeling not feeling rushed yeah that's why i feel like i'm always on time with things because i'm prepared i'm like all right cool this is going to happen mm -hmm. to get out of this time do this at this time but i'm okay if i do go over the time i'm not really upset because i'm like well i'm over the time it's fine mm -hmm. i'm still going to time yeah uh, and i start working at seven wow and rinse and repeat However, I think I'm going to change it now. I think I'm going to do the workouts in the morning. Mm, like like you said, yeah. I mean, that's cool though. We kind of have like our schedules or like our morning routines, at least half what we want. And then there's always room for improvement anyway. So, mm. yeah. Are they also practicing gratitude? Mm. A lot of people don't really do that. I know they complain and they say, they blame outer things like outer or external things mm, for their feelings and emotions and stuff yeah and a lot of people allow others to choose how they feel as well and i used to do that a lot mm. or like if someone like around you is having an outburst of some sort whether it's emotional whether they're sad whether they're angry mm. some people let that affect their mood and they become like it's almost like it's contagious for them so if someone around them is sad they'll be sad mm. but at some point, they're going to have to learn, if they want to, that is. Depends on who they have around them and how much so they mean to them. If they want to, if they're willing, if they're willing to. Yeah. yeah. Then they'll be able to have, like, this shield of, like, okay, well, you're feeling this type of way, but I'm not going to let it affect me because, realistically, I'm going to let you feel that type of way because that's what's really happening well, here. Well, not even let them. Like, that's just what they're feeling. Mm. Yeah. If you can help, cool, but... If they're not willing to take the advice on them, then they it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, you feel that, don't you? In it. But you can't really let it, like, deeply affect you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we just went deep, like, real quick. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. I, do you ever feel like there's, like, an hour in the day or, like, a moment where randomly you just feel overwhelmingly, like, like so much gratitude not throughout the day not every time but there are times where i do feel like that most of the time weirdly enough is when i know that good food is being cooked 
Like, do you know when the mm. same one's gonna make something up in here? <laughs> you gonna say Pinier? <laughs> or something that's really nice that I didn't realize I did want until someone said it. That it's gonna be made, yeah. Then I start thinking, oh my god, I've got food today. Fuck, I'm living a good life. Mm. I'm living in here, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, you know what I mean? I've got good people around me mm-hmm. and the energy is matched with mine and I'm, I'm so blessed. I felt I, I I felt over overwhelmed a lot of times where I'd start crying because I'd be like, "Fuck, I'm just so blessed, mm. like genuinely so blessed." Yeah, they're the best types of like cries as well because like they're they're such a good like they they are very good cries. They're very healthy good for you. Easy. Yeah, <clears throat> like we need that. <laughs> I feel like we need that to actually survive because if we don't have that like that release. Mm-hmm. It's just all bottled up and you're suppressing a part of you, which isn't healthy at all. So, yeah, but same. I've had moments where I'm just that grateful that I literally am crying, just mm-hmm. staring out at the space like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe this is like my life. Like, what? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's crazy. But my question now is about responsibilities. And, like, at this moment in time, how many responsibilities do you think you have? And what are they? Or like, what does responsibility mean to you? It's not a meaning, like being responsible, it's not a meaning. Mm. I think being responsible is being trusted with carrying out a task. Mm. Essentially, I mean, with every responsibility, it's usually a task, right? I mean, would you see anyone else? I believe you. So, yes, I agree with you. And I also believe that your priorities kind of are your responsibility. Because if these are your priorities, these are things that you are putting first. And if they're that important to you, you're going to be, re- you're going to have to be responsible enough to be able to take care of that and recognize that and actually work on what you want to work on. Um, so for me, I'd say family's at the top. Family is like my first priority, regardless of anything that's going on and everything that's happening. So for me, my responsibility I see is that I see is to be there for my family and to spend as much time possible with them. Okay. Do you get what I mean? That's like that's how my brain works. It's like, okay, so these are my priorities. So what am I doing about them? So your responsibilities are just to be there be there for the people that I love. That is m- one of my responsibilities, one of the key responsibilities I have. But then there's also like daily responsibilities, like looking after myself is a responsibility, making sure that something that I need to do is done. Mm-hmm. And if that's something I want to do, that's only my responsibility. What about things that, that you feel you should do, but you don't? Example, sleeping. No. Then? Example. Mom asked you to wash the dishes and you didn't do it. Hold okay. On. You can argue back and say I could do the same thing. I'd be hypocritical. Fine. You can attack me. I don't mind. However, it's your responsibility to be there for your parents and stuff like that. Yeah, it's your family. And you you are such a dishes. dickhead. This is why I call you a master manipulator, okay? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm you are. You it's are. A true thing. Uh, 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 it's a truth. Mom asked you and you didn't do it. You said no, straight up. I said not right now, actually, I because I was doing something else. In known. fact, I was preparing for this, so. I heard no. Well, you heard wrong. Okay. So. Okay, I mean, I'm not the deaf okay. one. I'm not the deaf one, but. Okay. Well, this is being cut out, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> but I guess, well, for me, responsibilities, I have, I have a few responsibilities, yeah. Mm. I have taking care of my mind and my body which mm-hmm. is my responsibility yeah uh taking care of bills mm-hmm. my responsibility yeah wow. i think a key factor of who i am as a person is caring for others and it's my responsibility to let the people around me know mm. that i do care for them yeah. And that's something I'm working on more. Okay. Because if I keep saying, which I always have, family is the most important thing to me. Mm-hmm. 
and yet I'm contradicting that. It's not, I'm, you know, that's hypocritical of me. Mm. And I've gotten better. I have, but there's still a lot of things that I can, I feel I can do. Yeah. The fact that you recognise it is obviously the first step and you see how much you have progressed mm. from when you didn't have that realisation. So you are working on yourself. And so you're being responsible in just, just by doing that. Mm. And then to actually actively act on it, like you said, you're working on it. So what, is it what is it you do cool. when, um, when you feel like you have no motivation or drive? Personally, I like to be grateful for everything I have. And there's a reason for that. If you know what everything you have around you is worth, and I don't mean like price-wise materialistic, no. Like having that support system, having people there that genuinely care for you, that'll stop you before you even get to the point where you need help. That's where I'm at. That's the people I have around me. They just recognizing the fact that I have people to talk to, instantly I'm grat like gratified. Mm -hmm. When there's a point where I feel stuck, I, for some reason, first acknowledge it and then feel like, okay, I'm going to deal with this when I feel like it's becoming an actual problem. And so I kind of like, I don't suppress it, but I don't think about it for a while mm. until I feel like, okay, I can handle this truth now. It just sounds to me from there, it just sounds like you just throw it in the corner until it builds up to the point where, okay, I've got to deal with it now. It doesn't, for me, I don't wait for it to build up. I wait until I'm actually comfortable. So it's never, it's never a point of like, okay, now shit, okay, now I'm panicking about it. No, I always stop myself and go back to deal with it, to think about it when I feel like I'm about to start panicking about it. Cause I'm an overthinker, right? So when I am like, when I have a thought stuck in the back of my mind, mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like I just have to resolve it straight away. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not going to let me sleep or it's not going to let me eat or whatever. Mm -hmm. So in order to process it, I think about the potential solutions I could have for that. And most of the time, there are multiple solutions. It's just a matter of actually actively doing something about it. Which for me, I think of it as like, okay, right now I'm doing this, this, this and this. So I'm going to do that next or I'm going to do that after I've done everything I'm doing dealing with right now or doing right now. Right. That's how my brain tends to work. But it's, I mean, it's worked for me so far. Like I, I feel like I'm pretty chill back and I'm still able to be there for other people, yeah. even when I'm going through my own stuff. Yeah. And then after I have dealt with it, I'm like, okay, cool. That worked. I'm good. Like I, that whole time I, I could have been stressing. I decided not to stress. Yeah. I'm slowly learning that over worrying won't do anything for me except for just making me mm -hmm. get anxious my anxiety is triggered by me overthinking over worrying so if i stop that before it gets to a point where i am overwhelmed and i have to have this breakdown which has happened in the past mm -hmm. i could just stop worrying about it and stop thinking about like all the outcomes that could potentially happen and actually wait until i'm comfortable to deal with it do something about it and then reflect I don't know if any of that made sense, but that's how my brain works. <laughs> I understand that some people think about the worst case scenarios just to be prepared for it, right? Mm. But why would you prepare for something that you don't want happening? I think it's like a backup plan, like a con contingency plan for people yeah. that they need in the back of their hand. Like, oh, Which I understand. if someone's going to come mm -hmm. rob me right now, yeah, what yeah. do I have on me to be able that's to stop fair. that? In that in that scenario, in that situation, of. that's yeah. valid, hundred percent. Mm. But let's say you you got a job interview mm -hmm. and you stress. Actually, I can't ask you these questions because you've never really had an interview. I've never really so had I a job can't interview. So I really think about it. For me, every time I've had like a sort of interview, which isn't like a proper, I've never had a proper face to face for an actual job interview, mm -hmm. but I've had like other interviews. Right. But, um, every time I'm about to have it, I get an exciting kind of nervousness. Yeah. It's like I'm, I already know that it's going to go positively. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's just personally down to me for what I was actually having an interview for. Yeah. And so when I'm in the interview, I'm confident, I'm bright, I'm happy. I know exactly what I want to say. Mm-hmm. Even I, And I'm very like last minute with things. So I literally in my head just before I answer the call or just before I go in person to see that person, I know like the basics of what I want to say. And then like the, the, you know how normally they ask like strengths, weaknesses and all that. I know them in the back of my mind. And so I'm a very last minute on the spot type of person. I don't like to prepare I'd say the same. for the thing. Yeah. I'd say the same thing, definitely. Because like I know a lot of people that would like read up on it and like read like how to do good in interviews and that would, I would get in my head about doing that. Yeah. Do you understand why people do that? I do. I do. And for a lot of people, it does work. Mm-hmm. But personally, I think that would just get in the way of me trying to answer because I will be recalling what I've read about, oh, you should say so, so, and so, like about this. If you ask this type of question, mm-hmm. answer it like this. Because then in my head, I'm like, okay, I need to answer it like this. Right. And I'll be so set on trying to get it perfect that I'll mess up. Mm-hmm. I see that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, I think that the reason why they do that is because they want to prepare for the best. That's what you do. You prepare yeah. for that. Which is understandable, and it's, mm. it's a good way of doing it. That um, is, yeah. But I'm similar with you. Where yeah. I like it off the cuff. Mm. Ask me a question, I'll answer it as honestly as I could without it sounding too unprofessional. Yeah, or like being a generic answer. It should be personal to you. Mm-hmm. And I think it helps that when you know yourself the best, like when you really like deeply self-reflect, you can answer it in a way that they know instantly you're being truthful mm-hmm. or like that you're not play like beating around the bush or like just at saying oh yeah no i'm i'm great i'm on time all the time because i'm not like no that's i'm not going to say that is my strength because i know that's actually one of my weaknesses realistically mm-hmm. so i would actually say something that does apply to me like i'm confident i'll be there for someone i'm very good at working in groups and stuff mm-hmm. things like that and even sometimes when I sound like I'm not professional, I still come across as very confident, especially talking to outsiders, like people that don't know me. I talk like they should know me. And today I read something or I heard something. It was like a video I was watching and it was talking about perception is reality. And when I heard it, I was like, it kind of blew my mind. This was literally just before we started the podcast. And she was talking about how to hack the system in a way. And this isn't just for, for interviews or anything. This is just anything, in life. Yeah, yeah. If you perceive yourself as like someone who deserves everything you have, someone who is confident, someone who clearly has everything together, even if you don't actually fake it till you make it, like mm-hmm. the more you make people perceive you as you perceive you, the more they be like, oh, she's like, she knows what she wants. Like she's got everything she wants or she knows what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. She treats herself like a queen. She deserves to be treated like a queen. And so the perception of yourself that you put out into the world is how you are perceived. And also that becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. And that was really interesting to me because I've seen that development for myself personally. When I took risks and went out and did things I don't normally do, Mm -hmm. I made new friends just by being completely myself. I felt confident. I felt like there was no effort in it at all. I felt at ease. And I attracted the best sort of people, the best souls that I've ever attracted in my entire life. Mm-hmm. And that I'm talking about in the last, I'm going to say last year. In the last year, I've been truly my most authentic self. Mm-hmm. And I've attracted the most beautiful souls that I know I'm going to have for, for a lifetime. And so I do believe the way you perceive yourself and the way you portray that out into the world is how you're perceived and that becomes the reality. Mm-hmm. No, yes. I agree with that, definitely, because there have been times where I would act as if I'm not in a position to deserve things. Mm. And that's only down to just what I say to myself. Mm. You know, it's a hard thing to get out of a pit that you've created yourself. It's doable, it just takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm guessing that also comes down to you being willing to do that and having the willpower to mm-hmm. gradually work through that. Yeah. I think everyone already has the willpower. Do you know how you said mm-hmm. um, it's all perception that creates your reality? If you perceive yourself as someone, even if you don't believe it sometimes, the way 
our brain works is what I've been what I've heard. But there's also other things that I've heard that's not that that the thing I'm about to say is not true. But they say that the more you repeat something, sometimes you might not even if you don't believe it. For example, saying um, I'm healthy. Someone who's obese that says I'm healthy, mm. they're not going to believe it at first. But repeating it at certain times is important. Certain times meaning in the morning when you wake up mm-hmm. and before you go to sleep. Because those thoughts go into your subconscious mind. I've heard this heard this from a man named Bob Proctor who sadly passed away. Mm-hmm. I think it was this year or last year. But he said your subconscious mind doesn't really know the difference between what's real and what's not. It just takes everything in as as it is. Mm. You tell yourself you're stupid, your subconscious mind will take it in as gospel. It's true. You're stupid. You tell yourself you're, you are... Um, uh, this is going into manifesting, but let's say you want to be financially free, telling yourself that you're financially free, but then also feeling as if it's true, like f- trying to put yourself in a situation where... Or imagining that that's where you are, mm-hmm. you know, and it won't work straight away, because a lot of people's problem is they want it now. Mm. But it's like ordering something online. You order something once, you know it's coming to you. Mm-hmm. What do you do? You start getting excited that it's coming to you, like an iPhone. You go obsess about it. Yeah, oh, it's coming, and you you know you do the YouTube searches, all the little <laughs> specs and that. <laughs> You already believe that it's already coming to you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The doing part was you buying it. Yeah. And with being financially free, the doing part is, you know, researching how to be, how to earn money. You know? Yeah. These things, the doing part is that. But if you've put it in, and there's so many researchers, if you envision yourself doing the things and, and having the things already and then putting in the work, it will come to you. Manifestation. I fully believe that. I believe in manifestation. A hundred percent. I do too. Yeah. And also, what you said, it reminded me of repetition equals reality. Yeah. The more you repeat something, that becomes reality, whether it's you're saying it to yourself or whether you're actively doing yeah. something. Um, and I just realised why you were saying that, that since I was little, I've always realized how happy I am and how content I am Mm. in that moment. So growing up, I've always had this happiness, this contentment. Is it contentment a word? I'm going to say contentment. (laughs) I've always been very content and very happy in the moment. And that's something I've just realized that I've always had. There's never been a time where I've, I've been like completely upset or completely angry or completely depressed. What do you mean? I feel like there's always been a part of me that has held on to the reality of why I'm happy, why I'm content. And it's always stuck with me. But why are you happy and content? Why do you feel It comes down to the moment. I think it's also about what I'm grateful for and what I'll always have Mm -hmm. or what I have had anyways from now. And for me personally, that's been being there for myself. That's been a big thing. I've always had my back, even with like, just any situation that was thrown my way and any situation that will be thrown my way, I know I can handle it. Mm. I have that much confidence in myself, just about like, and this is not about being conceited or anything. No, this is realizing the fact that if I was in a situation that's really fucked up Mm. or that I shouldn't personally be in or that I'll never see myself in, but unfortunately I'm there. I will be able to get out of it if it's very, very negative, or even if it's just slightly negative. I'll be able to get out of anything that I believe I shouldn't be in. And that's in like any situation. Mm. And I've I've never, I don't think I've always had that part of like knowing I have my own back, but I've always had just, I've always been very wholesome, I feel. And and had this realization of I'm happy right now. Mm-hmm. I'm happy being me. I've never had the urge to want to be someone else or to live somebody else's life. 
as much as you can like scroll through Instagram and be like, oh my God, look, like she's, she's amazing. She's on holiday. She's earning peas. She's doing everything she wants to do. I feel happy for people, but I never have had this instinct to like, oh, je- like an in- instant envy, instant want to be them. I've never been that type of person. You've never been jealous of someone living their life. I don't, I, I believe there's a slight bit of envy where you're like, okay, I can't wait to get to that stage. That's what I always think. Mm. I never think I want to be that person. So you, are you saying you never compared your life to others? Comparing is, I'm, I don't want to say different because it's part of what we're talking about, but mm. I believe comparing comes down to how you perceive it. So for me, comparing is about how well someone else is doing. But for me, it's also how long it's going to take for me to get to that point. I never think of like the negatives. Oh, they've got so much money. I've, I haven't got money. They've got this and I haven't got this. Yeah. It reminds me of the J. Cole song, Love Yours. Because yeah. it's so true. It doesn't matter about what anybody else has. It doesn't matter about materialistic things or financial freedom. Yeah. Until you love your own life, you're, not, you're never going to actually be content. Yeah. And so when you do love your own life to that point, you can look at anybody in the world, the most famous person, the most rich person, the most beautiful person, and you'll just feel happiness for them. But also so happy that you don't have to be there Mm -hmm. because you can be yourself. How long do you think you've had this mindset? I I have always felt a certain way since I was younger. I don't know since when, Mm -hmm. but since I've become more confident, I've realized a lot more things about myself. And as much as a part of me wishes I had been more confident in the past, because I used to be very shy, very reserved. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a lot more open and talk a lot more to Mm -hmm. basically everyone. I'm glad that I had the time to be shy, to be reserved, to keep to myself. All right, cool, guys. (laughs) Shout out to Man Like Billy. Listen, bro, I know your shoes are wrecked, but listen, yeah. Just play some rules. Shout out to the person in JD buying shoes for that person. (laughs) The, <laughs> the link up. Um, but right, yeah. Well, thanks for listening and um, mm-hmm. take care. We love you. Bye.